Hey guys and welcome to World of Warships with Vulavu. In today's video I'm trying out a new thing. Uh, this is my first subscriber replay that I'm featuring on my channel. And today's replay uh, we will be watching uh, West 101 ABN from the North American server selling his uh, Dersky T3 uh, Russian destroyer. And before we move on to the battle, my commentary and my feedback to uh, West 101, I wanted to give you the skinny on the most important stats of this uh, ship. So, um, first of all, the guns. They're useless. 102 millimeters, and they're basically there just for the show. Uh, just to occupy your crew while you're being killed by long range fire, basically. Uh, the main armament of this destroyer is the five double top launchers that are essentially mounted so you can launch those torpedoes both sides if you should you want to. And the torpedoes have got a three kilometer range and they don't really do that much damage per torpedo. Spotting range of this uh, ship is 6.1 kilometers and it is 2.9 kilometers from the air. This is something that will come in handy later on in the replay. And the Dead Ski's survivability is quite high for a destroyer of this tier. It's 9,700 hit points. And it's got the most hit points of all tier 3 destroyers that I know of. And uh, the most important bit of information that you really want to know and keep in mind when sailing the Dead Ski is the fact that uh, the reload time for your torpedo, torpedo launchers is 22 seconds. And I just want you to think about this for a moment. If you have five torpedo launchers and you launch a torpedo spread every four seconds, by the time you launch the last, the fifth torpedo set, uh, the, the first one will already have been reloaded for about two seconds. So you can continuously launch torpedoes should you have the opportunity to do so. So uh, that's all the stats that I think are relevant for uh, this replay and uh, the replays that I'm going to show of my own gameplay in a couple of moments. And let's move on to the battle itself. So as you can see, uh, West 101 has been uh, matched up in a tearful match in the, on the New Dawn uh, map with the Domination Mode 3 cap points. He spawned in the north and he's, uh, the moment the battle starts, he's speeding up and uh, he's going towards the B cap. Now, I want to uh, do a little disclaimer. I always put up videos that have been basically recorded live while I was playing them, the games. So, the, the videos I have are usually very smooth and they usually don't have any glitches but because this is a replay and I was recording it from a replay file the actual foot footage will be a little bit glitchy and for this I apologize but there is not nothing I can do it's it's wargaming uh, and their uh, approach to making replays work for World of Warships mostly it will work fine and uh, there will be one or two really visible glitches during, during the, the replay itself. So, since I am doing a bit of a commentary on his performance in this battle, I'm definitely going to commend him for uh, making sure that the, the friendly carrier uh, knows that he's sort of out of position. The, the fact that he's communicating in, with the team is, is really good. And uh, yeah, that is something that you should be doing. And you know, the higher you get in tier, uh, tier for tier, the, the more prevalent it actually is, the more people actually do pay attention to this. So, the spotting range from the air is 2.9 kilometers, and those, uh, those fighters are hovering out there and spotting, basically, uh, spotting his destroyer for the enemy fleet. So, uh, the easiest left, tier 4, the, the destroyer shows up within the gun range and, uh, West opens up on the easiest left. Not do really doing that much. As I said, the guns on this destroyer are 
crap, they're, they're basically dead for sure. I, I really don't see any practical application of these except for, you know, hanging laundry on. Uh, so, yeah, so he took two uh, quick volleys towards the Isioslav but was quite unsuccessful. There are torpedoes there in the water, so Isioslav just launched something. And he's circling around uh, this island to have a better approach to attacking this uh, destroyer. There are two friendly cruisers and another uh, destroyer moving in on the B cap, so you know their, their presence is quite high here. So you know you you can actually feel, uh, be a bit more bolder when sailing a destroyer if there's so, such a huge force following you. So he op opens up on the um, enemy Kuma, and again, no damage, nothing to, not nothing noteworthy actually. Um, but he keeps on trying and I really like that. He's uh, changed to AP but at this angle even the Kuma won't actually bounce it. I guess we'll never find out. And uh, look at the map now. I think this is the moment when OS notices uh, his chance for his first kill. There's a battleship just to the right behind this island and it seems that it's either maneuvering or, or almost stationary because uh, well that's your only option there if you're in a battleship and you're actually putting yourself between those two islands so you, yeah it looks like he was trying to turn around but the moment he spotted Wes uh, the battleship changed its mind and now you can see you can tell which side the back guns of this uh, battleship were because he's turning in a way to expose them and actually open up on Wes from all and well just look at this this is exactly the level of um, seal clubbing murder that you can actually do in a dead ski uh, if you are giving a chance. Nine torpedoes so just one of them missed and uh, the battleship is gone. So now the next thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that uh, Wes is a very disciplined player. Uh, you might have noticed that he's been uh, actively using the um, on-off switch for the AA. He's been keeping his uh, anti-air guns off every time uh, he wasn't actively engaging any, any air aircraft. But uh, just one little comment for this. Um, as I said, your spotting range is 2.9 kilometers from the air, so that's how you get spotted right now by, by those um, by those torpedo bombers. But your, the range of your actual AA guns, which are almost non-existent on the desk key, are z is 0 0.9 kilometers. So you, you really in in many cases it makes sense to switch off the guns on. Uh, a destroyer if you're sailing a destroyer but only if you actually know that the AA guns have got a bigger range than your air spotting range otherwise it really does not make sense you can you can just leave them on and you know not worry about um, another thing that you have to keep in mind when uh, sailing your destroyer so yeah just you know a lesson for Wes and for anyone who's sailing those low tier destroyers just make sure that you actually you know, have a, have a good reason to, to switch off the AA uh, on occasion because in this case it really did not, did not matter much. Um, it's very commendable that he, that he keeps this in mind and you know, it's good practice for higher tiered um, battles but uh, yeah, in the desk you really don't have to worry about it too much. So the enemy Langley is the next target and we just breached uh, 3 kilometers, which is the range of the torpedoes, so Wes just aligns and this is pure slaughter, there is nothing that those two Langleys can do to survive this. Uh, so yeah, it's just a matter of time. And that's the first Langley gone and now just check out that uh, reload rate on the desk key. He has just killed the first Langley and he's already got all five torpedo tubes reloaded 
and ready to go for the second one. And that's his uh, replay finished. So let's move on to uh, Wes's uh, post-battle uh, result screens. In those couple of minutes, Wes has managed to uh, land 21 torpedo hits. He killed uh, three enemy ships, uh, two carriers and a battleship. And only managed to land uh, 19 gun hits, which, you know, from my perspective is 19 too many. You're basically wasting your time if you do, if you want to use guns. Or you, if, you know, if you want to occupy your crew before you die. Well, why not? Let make them make them work. So 148,000 of profit and uh, 2,600 of experience, a triple devastating strike, and a high, high caliber award. And this has put Wes on top of his uh, team list at the end, and gave him uh, 1,100 base experience. And moving on to the damage dealt, six and a half thousand with uh, his guns, and just over a hundred thousand with uh, the torpedoes, which was a really good result. Right, so now that I've showed you this replay, I've uh, decided to jump into a dead ski myself. I, I I have to say that I haven't actually sailed the dead ski before I got this replay from uh, Wes. Uh, I basically skipped uh, half of the uh, Russian um, destroyer tree uh, all the way to... Well, actually more than a half, all the way to the Kiev. Um, I was very curious of uh, the higher tier uh, Russian destroyers and I had some uh, free experience to burn and basically I just jumped up there. So uh, I've never I've never played the desk before, so Wes has got um, over 180 battles in the desk. Uh, I've got seven. So yeah, so let's uh, move on to the first clip. So I spawn on the New Dawn map just as uh, West did, but I spawn in the southern side of the map, and basically I proceed to do the exact same thing he did. I'm, I'm steaming ahead to the center of the map, and uh, I'm hoping to score a couple of uh, destroyer hits. But that's the moment I notice that we've actually got a huge destroyer advantage, three destroyers against just one on the enemy team. So I'm changing my plans, and uh, I, I basically want to start hunting uh, battleships. Uh, as I basically expect that there won't be that many ships in the center here that will be willing or able to spot me, so I'm, I, I, I'm hoping that they will be able to sneak up to that little island there on uh, E6. And the moment I spot this Emperor Nikolai, Imperator Nikolai uh, battleship, I hit the engine boost and start just racing down to uh, the corner of that little island right ahead of me. Because I can, I know that I can make that, I can close that distance before the Russian battleship arrives there, and this will give me the perfect staging area for my uh, short-range three-kilometer uh, torpedoes. So I'm moving in there. And I'm nearly there, and you know, just this is the way I use uh, islands for concealment. Just check out how I'm making sure that there's always enough island between me and that battleship to not get spotted until the last moment. I will get spotted a bit too early here anyway, but uh, yeah, that's 4.8 kilometers, 4.6, 4.5. Three point three kilometers. Three kilometers. I'm within the torpedo range, and that uh, torpedo bomber squadron above me uh, is why I used smoke because they know that the torpedo squadron will keep on spotting the ships for me, even when I'm actually completely hidden in smoke. So that's how I actually managed to uh, stop being spotted and see all of the enemy ships still uh, right ahead of me. I, I don't lose vision because of the smoke. And that's how I land my first 
eight torpedo hits. And I quickly noticed that I don't really need to move that far. The other uh, Emperor Nikolai uh, battleship has just re entered my uh, torpedo range. And my torpedoes, again, are completely reloaded, so I'm ready to go. Uh, the Ni uh, Nikolai disappears, but uh, I basically blind launched those torpedoes. I, I'm, I think I'm on the spot, uh, right on the mark, so yeah. And that's when I get a huge hit from the Emperor Nikolai, and uh, yeah, I just speed up very quickly and I try to use this island for cover. And again, uh, by the time I'm already behind cover, I, I've already la launched three torpedo spreads just to finish off that battleship. Because reasons. Because I can, basically. That's the insane re uh, reload rate of uh, this destroyer. And this is all I wanted to show you from this clip. 19 torpedo hits in uh, basically under four minutes and uh, I will die in a second, I will get killed with the first couple battles in the dead ski. I, um, I could get the kills but I just could not get myself to survive uh, for long enough. So I'm definitely going to skip all this now and uh, move on to my last clip uh, and I will give you a bit more of my way of thinking when uh, sailing this uh, Russian destroyer. Right guys, so let's move on to the last replay and uh, let's recap the dead ski stats again. Uh, the AA range on the dead ski is 0 0.9, so there's no point of using the um, switching off the uh, AA armament. Uh, the guns are completely useless, three of them, 102 millimeters. Do not use them unless you're bored. Uh, you have five double torpedo launchers with a three kilometer range on them. Uh, the spotting range is 6.1 kilometers, and the reload rate for your torpedo launchers is 22 seconds, which is really good. And now let's move, let's move on to the battle itself. So I spawn in the northern part of the Solomon Islands uh, map. Uh, I'm right in the smack in the center of my uh, fleet, and uh, I decide that I'm going to yellow right into the B cap. And normally, if um, if I see a destroyer doing this on this particular map, it's usually I usually write this destroyer off because it's a slaughterhouse there. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, and you know, it's quite likely if you're sailing in a tier three battle, tier four battle, uh, if you don't know you, what you're doing, you will die very quickly. But it can also be very rewarding, and you will see this in a second. Okay, so I'm just about to enter the cap circle and I'm kinda... Because I'm expecting the enemies to come from the left side, I'm kinda keeping to the center because I want to have enough space on my left side to be able to turn in there. Just in case I, I, um, I had to bail. So um, I'm still in the center, I'm preparing to launch my torpedoes. I'm expecting a destroyer, so I'm thinking I'm going to use narrow spreads, but I will fan the torpedoes out quite wide, one next to another, basically to cover quite a wide area, and that's what I'm doing now, one to the right, a slightly more, center, left, more to the left, and that's five torpedo spreads that will basically cover that whole area. So as I said, I, I, I'm using this space here now to turn around, and that's the first uh, enemy dead. And there's some torpedoes incoming, but uh, they do scare me a little bit, but uh, they run out of steam, so I'm safe. And I'm moving straight in. So now the next one in line is the enemy Chester. And I remember from sailing it that the Chester doesn't really have that great gun, so I'm thinking this time I'm going to make a much closer approach. Uh, I want to, basically my goal is to transition to that area of the map because here I'm being spotted by the Chester and I'm under fire from all those uh, enemy cruisers to my right. So I'm, I'm coming in and the moment I'm a kilometer and a half away from the Chester I launch 
And I'm I'm really overzealous here. Uh, one torpedo spread is enough to kill the Chester, but uh, I launch all of them basically just for fun as well. And that's where I use the smoke screen, not to protect myself from anyone because I am out of my uh, spotting range. There's there's nothing that can spot me here. But I see the uh, friendly fleet moving in on the B cap, and I basically do not want. Uh, the enemies to, to the north, the ones that are approaching to see, know just how big a force has uh, detached itself from the main fleet and, and going through here because they might turn around and just crush us. So I have to say that I'm, I'm being a little bit confusing for the team right now because I'm thinking initially I, uh, I'm shielding my fleet from the north so maybe it would be actually better to move uh, to the south and just kill off those two cruisers and, and uh, a uh, destroyer that is there. Otherwise, that uh, friendly cruiser might actually die there quite quickly. But then I realized that if we do that, we will spread our forces too thinly, and uh, um, I changed my mind and then basically trying to uh, master my team to actually go with me towards the north now. Uh, as I see, this is a much better tactic to actually uh, winning the game. So. Uh, yeah, it is a bit of my fault. I was, I think that if I actually rushed straight to, uh, through the F line, the, the the other two cruisers would have followed, and without that, I have to resort to uh, writing uh, in the chat. I'm hitting the engine boost. I basically need to catch up. My um, general aim right now is to stop bothering that battleship. Uh, that is lagging behind and that's when one of the uh, friendly cruisers responds and uh, I know that uh, I can count on him helping me out. I'm thinking that the friendly battleship that has just entered B should actually stay on the far side of this island uh, support our cruiser and that destroyer near C but it's, it's a bit late now so but yeah, anyway, uh, this is the moment where I noticed that the South Carolina is uh, steaming straight ahead of me. And that's a tip for you here right now. Uh, don't always stay in your torpedo scope, even if your guns are useless, because uh, this gun scope is a very useful thing. Just check out. I know now that I'm relatively safe from that uh, South Carolina. The, the guns on the South Carolina, the front ones, were facing, were pointing to the front. So he must, have been, well, he must have been aiming at something else there. So I, I was safe basically up until now. Now he's shooting me. And uh, I was uh, free to launch those torpedoes. So just look what I'm doing here. I've, I've launched uh, all of five of my torpedo spreads. And hopefully the South Carolina is going to eat most of them. But this is where I miscalculated my uh, lead. And uh, I've launched those torpedoes way too early. Even though I do that quite often in my videos, actually, I launch my torpedoes uh, outside of my torpedo range. But it's all calculated, and this time I actually miscalculated it. So, uh, the battleship is dead, I spot smoke very quickly to hide, and that's where I noticed the enemy Kohlberg, just two and a half, two point seven 2.7 kilometers away from me. So I drop my speed, keep turning, and prepare myself to uh, kill the Kohlberg with a very tight... Um, torpedo launch. All, all of five of my torpedo um, spreads were basically aimed at the same spot. And if it wasn't for the other friendly torpedoes, I'm sure that mine would have killed it. So, um, again, that's how you can actually engage enemies with really short range torpedoes right in the middle of a sea. There's no, there was no cover here. All I did was to just go head on, use the fact that the um, battleship was uh, basically aiming at someone else at the beginning. I used the engine boost to um, speed up my approach and uh, kill the battleship and then just use what uh, opportunities were given to me by the developments in the, during the battle and uh, yeah then kill off that uh, cruiser. So as you can see, I'm under fire from the enemy cruisers. The friendly cruiser that promised to come and help me has actually arrived and is taking some of the heat. But I'm doing a really stupid thing here, I don't know why I did that, but uh, I'm, I'm sailing in a straight line while under direct fire from uh, enemy cruisers and uh, 
I obviously pay for it with my life. Uh, so that's uh, all. Um, that's all of my input to this particular battle. Uh, so moving on to the final battle results screen. Uh, this uh, was a defeat, we lost this, but uh, I just wanted to show you what kind of uh, money and what kind of experience you can expect. So 13 torpedo hits and 3 kills. That gave me uh, 144,000 of profit and 3,000 of experience. Uh, 2 double strikes and first blood. Uh, the double strikes, that's something that you will be getting loads of in Adesky because if you're close enough to launch your torpedoes, you will launch all of them, and that basically means that whatever you're launching them at will get killed. And that is a devastating strike right there, so yeah. So that 3000 experience is uh, basically 800 of base experience on a loss and a first place on my team. And uh, as you can see, I made uh, very good use of my guns in this uh, in this particular match. Money-wise, uh, the desk key is an excellent money maker. It, it really costs nothing to uh, repair it, uh, so that uh, 144,000 means that I've made 138 and a half thousand of pure profit. So. Guys, that will be all for this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it and uh, maybe even got a little bit educated by it. And uh, if you did, please rate the video down below. It definitely helps the channel out. And also, if you did like the video, uh, think about uh, hitting that subscribe button up there. Because uh, I will have many more uh, new ones coming out. The next one I think I will be doing on the brand new uh, Tier 8 Russian uh, Cruiser. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay tuned. And until then, I'll catch you on the open seas.